Welcome to The Dental Brief, the world's direct, right-to-the-point podcast produced to get you the information you need to learn and grow your practice. To learn more about our guests and find links to information discussed on our show, visit our website, dentalbrief.com. On to today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief. So excited to have back with us today on the program our, our fourth guest. Um, she was our fourth guest. She was gracious enough to do the program um, before we really got started. And so I'm glad to have you back here. Say hello, Brandy Hooker Evans. Hey, Patrick. I am so delighted to be back for another episode of The Dental Brief. Yeah, and we hope to have you back for the 204th or the 244th or 34th or something like that in the future. So we'll make that commitment today, right? Absolutely. Four is my ne- lucky number, so I am especially excited to <clears throat> celebrate with you. That's wonderful. Congratulations. So for those of you or for those who haven't met you, haven't seen you out and about on the speaking circuit, if you will, um, or haven't heard you on the show, shame on them first, but oh. you... Tell us, tell us how you got into dentistry. How'd you become a hygienist? Well, I fell in love with dentistry as a kid. My uncle was my dentist growing up and my auntie was the assistant for an office gal. And so I thought it was really fun. Every time we got to go, my grandmother always took me cause they lived in a neighboring town. So it was a whole deal, right? You got to go stay the night at grandma's house, go get your teeth clean, see a couple of your favorite family members. And then my grandma, grandma always took us for um, maple bars afterwards. So just in case for those of you that are listening today, we're going to talk about inflammation. If there's any question about maple bars and their ability to cause a cavity and cause inflammation, let's just say it, it's a fun memory, but not what I do now after I get my teeth cleaned. <laughs> yeah, I bet that does sound kind of problematic. I don't even know what a maple bar is. So just tell us real quickly, what's a maple bar? Like a maple donut, you know, so the, like... a donut with the maple frosting on top. Got it. Okay. So Delicious now when you're a little kid and you just get your teeth cleaned and they get done putting the fluoride on and then your grandma goes and puts the anti-fluoride right straight onto your teeth. It was a ton of fun. <laughs> you know what's funny about that as a little kid? I remember a really little kid going to the dentist. If you had no cavities, of course, this was only brought up like the day you were going to the dentist, right? Oh, if you have no cavities, you get a treat afterwards. And it's today, <laughs> like not every day for the six months prior to going to the dentist, right? It was on that day, the day you could literally do nothing about it, but maybe clean your teeth, right? Brush your teeth. <laughs> we're going to talk about inflammation today. I Thank you for talking about this. Um, Obviously, we're talking about the overall health of the patient, but inflammation is something that I West Nile virus 20 years, over 20 years ago, and I still have issues from it today. And autoimmune is through the roof. And depending on what's going on in my life, it's literally depending on how much weightlifting I'm doing, really, how much I'm running. Um, My inflammation can get through the roof. And I know because I go to the dentist that that can significantly uh, affect your gum health. So how do we talk to patients about this? Tell me, tell me, what, what do we do? What's the, what's the way that we can make ourselves better in our practices by knowing more about the subject? Well, the first thing I'm going to invite everyone to do today is to stop talking to your patients about brushing and flossing. So just hang with me here, put that in the corner uh, with a little yeah. pin on it. We're going to, we're going to circle back to that because what we know now with the science in 2021 has told us is that our entire body is connected to itself and working together. So if you have inflammation in your gingival tissue, in your gums, then your entire immune system is responding to that infection. One of the little tidbits that is always really interesting to me is when someone has an infection in their gums, in their mouth, the liver says, oh, well, I don't like that. Redu- releases low density lipoproteins or LDLs or the bad cholesterol into your bloodstream. And so then that circulates throughout your body. Well, in America, every single year, we lose 800,000 people to cardiovascular disease. It is the number one killer of Americans every single year, regardless of what else is going on. So if we know that the infection in our mouth is causing an immune system response, then We have to stop telling our patients that they need to brush and floss better. What we want 
to do is have our patients look at their body as a total system, their gum health, their heart health, their autoimmune. I mean, 7% of Americans have an autoimmune disease right now. And that number is growing every single year. Right. So, um, my, if we can say, Hey, Patrick, did you know that going for a 20 minute walk after work, either on the phone by yourself or next to someone that you love can help your gums heal. Now that's food for thought right there. Sure. But, but what else does this do though? Cause right. Cause it, you're, it does help gum health. Right. But tell me bigger picture, right? What is it? What is the, the like on a, on a more global scale? What does that do for that patient? Right. Not just talking about their gums, but what does that do for them and in, in your relationship with them all together? Right. So for, as the relationship, it sets us up as an expert that's actually caring about them, their whole body, not just Charlie Brown's teacher telling us that you got to brush and floss. But when someone goes for a walk and you're using both sides of your body, it allows your brain to relax and ac- access the more creative side. So you've probably heard of the creative part of your brain, the higher thinking part of your brain, the frontal lobe versus the amygdala, which is the reptile part of your brain, the fight or flight part of your brain. So what we're trying to do when we go for a walk, one of the things is to reduce stress, right? Because it allows our brain to chill out, let the stress of the day wash away and just process the gift that is this moment out on the walk. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. So I know this is something that I've learned recently um, is that a lot of people think that they can relax by the, you know, Netflix and chill, right. Or, you know, watching whatever movie they want to watch or playing video games or what have you. But I've, I've actually read that there is zero stress relief benefit to watching television, that it actually doesn't relax people any more than things like working uh, do, that TV is actually just as stressful as as working. So we know that it does significantly lower stress going for a walk or even actually any type of exercise. Right. That's right. So talking about overall health, I think is fantastic. But tell me, how do you how do you do how do you do that without kicking in that lizard brain and actually kind of, you know, maybe even intimidating the person. They're already in a vulnerable, I, I think, going to the dentist is, I don't think there's anything that I do that's more vulnerable in my entire life physically than going to the dentist, right? You're kind of laid out in the chair. There's people with really, usually really nice white smiles, you know, in front of you and and very intelligent people. And it's just very, I think it's, it is, it's just, you're vulnerable. So how do you tell them these types of things without them being one offended that never happens to anyone anymore, or that, you know, they just kind of take it the wrong way and they don't really want to listen to you. So what's your approach there? Well, I back up all the way to the beginning when I go and get the patient out of the waiting room, instead of calling them like a puppy from the door, I go and gather them in and I say, obviously you're probably the only Patrick looking dude in the waiting room. I have your chart. I know how old you are. I know, you know, I can go figure out who Patrick is without calling him like a dog. So I'm going to go and I'm going to gather you from the waiting room and say, hi, Patrick. So good to see you today. Come on back. And from the first moment, I'm going to make sure that without a doubt, you know that we're on a team together. It's not me against you. You're not in trouble for anything. But I want to know, hey, how are you? What's going on? Do I need to, are you taking any medications? Have you had any surgery? What's going on with the sequelae of the West Nile virus that you had 20 years ago? You know, I, I, I'm i going to start building that relationship as a partnership. Then as I go into the assessment phase between the medical history, blood pressure, oral cancer screening, radiographs, and perio chart, I'm going to give you the tools for you to decide for yourself what's going on in your mouth so that we can co-diagnose. You, me, and the doctor all together are going to decide what's going on. So then when we get to the point of the appointment where, Patrick, you're like, Brandy, I have infection in my mouth. And I'm like, Patrick, you have infection in your mouth. You are correct. 
instead of putting my hands on my hips and saying all the things you can do by this point, I'm going to have a good idea of who you are and what you're interested in. Do you like food? Am I going to share with you that fresh fruits and veggies are going to help your gums heal? Do you wish that you took more time for yourself? I'm going to share with you, hey, did you know that even just a 20 minute walk, even a 10 minute walk at lunch is going to help relieve that stress? Oh, you're taking care of your mom with Alzheimer's. I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, that's going to, that makes it hard to sleep, doesn't it? And uh, and. So I'm relating to you as a human, as a team member that is out for your well-being. And I'm paying attention so I can pick one anti-inflammatory practice that's going to benefit you, that you feel like you want to do, and that you feel like you can do, so that when you leave, you not only incorporate that practice, but you already know that brushing and flossing better is going to help with the gingival infection. So you're stopping at the Costco, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, like whatever your hometown store is. And you're buying that power toothbrush that we talked about for six years leading up to this. Cause you know, you already know. And now you go home and instead of being in trouble for not brushing and flossing, you've got a walk date with your wife every day this whole week, starting at 5 27 PM. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. You talked about connecting with your patients, right? And I think it's something that a lot of um, a lot of dentists, I think hygienists, they, they do struggle with that. I personally think, and this is probably not accurate of me, but somehow in my head I have it that dentists struggle a little bit more than hygienists do to connect with patients. And I think maybe that's because they, they oftentimes spend less time with the patient, especially someone who has relatively you know, healthy teeth. Um, what does it feel like when you really connect with the patient, when you know that you've actually made that human connection? What does that do for your job satisfaction? Oh, man. <clears throat> it makes me ready to get out of the bed in the morning. It brings me to tears of joy to see patients that I have fallen in love with as the you know, we're, we're in charge of caring for these humans. That's why we became dental professionals in the first place. It overwhelms me with joy. And then the beautiful part about that is now I have more energy at the end of my day to go for that walk with my kids or my husband or my dog or just myself outside. And then I have more excitement about getting up the next day and coming back to work. It is a cascade of phenomenal events when you become to be when you become human and invested in the total health of each person that you are blessed with the opportunity to serve as a dental clinician. Yeah, I we had we had a, I encourage everyone to go for walks. We had a we had someone on the program not too long ago who talked about how valuable going walks were as far as just thinking and you know, having setting vision and being creative and, and what have you. And never really thought about it very much. Um, I love to be outside, but I'm not like one of these typical, like, you know, people in my neighborhood that I, I see walking. Um, but I started to read a little bit about entrepreneurs and just great people of our times and, you know, people like Winston Churchill and, you know, how much they really were able to think um, clearly and some of the, the brilliance that's happened on this planet when people are on walks is amazing. So I encourage everyone to do that as you are. Um, Brandy, thank you so much for coming back. Let me, your website real quick, quickly. Let me put that out there. It's uh, brandyhookerevans.com, correct? True. Encourage our team to go there. I know um, that you have some cool little treats um, as we record this the day after Halloween for um, people. If they go there, some nice free downloads and, and easy way to contact you as well, correct? Absolutely. I would love to see it. Yeah, it's awesome. So glad to have you here. Thank you so much, Brandy. Thank you, Patrick. Have a fabulous week. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Did you know you can weigh in on today's topic on Facebook? Search The Dental Brief on Facebook or visit our website, dentalbrief.com, and just follow the link. We look forward to having you join us again on another episode of The Dental Brief.